Hello and welcome to this very quick guide about regular expressions. And regular expressions are something very powerful and very useful that really every developer should be comfortable with um, and should know how to build up regular expressions for really quite complicated pattern matching. So what are they? A regular expression is really just a way of describing a pattern that you would find in a string. So patterns in terms of matching numbers or words, maybe combinations of numbers or letters, punctuation, anything really that describes the string. What do we use them for? Uh, the first, maybe most obvious one, uh, certainly in web applications, is for security reasons. So if we want a user to type in something like a username, then we don't want them typing uh, strange characters that might be used for SQL injection. We don't want them put in JavaScript um, straight into that, that input field. And we can use regular expressions to do that really quite easily. The second reason which is related to that is to do with robustness. So even if it's not security issue, if we're asking a user to input a URL and at some point we're going to navigate to that URL, then it would be a good idea just to check that the format of that is correct. And again, we can use a regular expression to do that. Regex is also very, very fast. So um, as an example, once I was parsing a file that was used for a CAN bus, an electronics CAN bus, and there were thousands and thousands of messages in that file. And I think the file was about seven gig in size. And I was being asked to find specific messages within that, that large file. So uh, without using regexes, I opened it, I used just, um, you know, string.contain, string.starts with those kinds of functions in, in .NET. And it took about two minutes, I think, for this program to run and to pull out all of the individual messages that we were interested in. So then I decided to give it the, the same thing a go with a regular expression. So it was doing exactly the same job, but matching on a pattern rather than just using the .NET string functions. Uh, and the very same thing took about two seconds to run instead. So they really are very fast. And that's one of the reasons they're useful to get to know them. Uh, and the other way that we use reg regular expressions, or we can use them, is we can extract groups of data out of a string. So we might have a string that is, let's say, a message. And then once we match that message, we can then pull out the individual parts of that message, which we might then want to use or log to file or things like that. Just some kind of warnings to kind of keep in the back of your mind. There are some different flavors of regular expressions. So even though theoretically all regular expressions are the same, in reality, some features are present in some libraries and not others. And some features work slightly differently in different languages. Um, so really the lesson is here that you really do need to test things and make sure that they do exactly what you expect them to do. Um, Regexes are also certainly the more complicated ones are really just a lot of codes, a lot of backslashes and brackets and numbers and all kinds of stuff. And so because they're not really very readable in their most complicated form, obviously it's very easy to mistype um, uh, your, your pattern and to get it wrong. So again, you just need to use testing. Uh, and it's usually fairly easy to build up regular expressions in, in chunks, in sections. So that's definitely recommended rather than trying to go, you know, the, the whole nine yards in, in the first attempt. Uh, another one that gets people who are new to regular expressions is that some of the operators, so we'll talk about this later, but a star um, is a way of saying that I want to match the preceding term one or more to uh, zero or more times. But these um, operators are greedy, which means they'll match as much as possible um, when it's run against the input string. And sometimes that causes confusion. And we'll see an example of that later to kind of get a bit of an idea of what's going on. But if your regular expression is not doing what you think it is, there's a good chance that you've been caught out um, by the greediness of these operators. And the last one, which I found out recently, is that Unicode and regexes don't really work well together. And I think that's simply because the regex engines were built kind of before Unicode was really, um, you know, used that widely. And the other problem is that Unicode is not as simple uh, in the way it represents characters as ASCII 
because for instance in Unicode you might have you know two or three code points which form to make a single displayable letter so in terms of regular expression how would you actually match that character because even though it's a character to you as a human as far as the uh, code is concerned it's really three different characters so there are some things you've got to be careful of if you're trying to use it in Unicode and it certainly doesn't work um, in the way that you would hope so how do we actually use these regexes well it, it does depend on the language but it should be fairly easy to find the documentation depending on what language you're using um, the pattern that you're building up is really just a string with loads of codes in it and we'll see some examples in a second um, in PHP pregmatch is basically uh, the PGRC regular expression match function and that's just a it returns an integer but it's effectively used as a boolean to say does this pattern match this input uh, and in .NET we actually use a class called regex which is in system.text.regularexpressions namespace and then once we've created that regex from the pattern and we can apply some options to it as well we then just call isMatch to actually get a Boolean result or we can call um, match to actually return um, you know, all of the different subgroups and stuff if that's what we're trying to do. Uh, the other thing that's really useful to note is there are some online sites that you can test your regexes on. Regex101.com is just one of them, but it's really nice to use. It's got kind of highlighting so it will show you which parts of your pattern are matching which parts of the string and that can be really helpful when you're trying to debug stuff. So let's go into the kind of uh, different things that you'll see in your pattern string. And I think I, I want to start with the, the hat and the dollar symbol. Um, and these really are just start and end of line anchors. Uh, and really what we want to do is we're saying here, in most cases, the pattern I'm trying to match, I want to match across the entire string. So I don't just want to find my pattern, you know, halfway through the string. I want to match the whole lot. So you can use one or the other or both of these. The hat goes at the start of the pattern and anchors the start of the pattern to the start of the string. And the dollar does the same at the end. Um, slightly more complicated when you're talking about um, strings that might have new line characters in. So you need to read up uh, if you have strings with new lines within the string. You need to read up what happens when you try and match that. But as the example shows below, if we just have hello um, as our pattern and hello um, in, means what it looks like, it means it will match the word hello, but it also matches, I've got there, hell of a day or it is hell out there. And both of those strings have the word hello in them. And it's not even actually the word hello. It's just, a, you know, it's just found the letters in the right order. Um, and that's probably not what we want to match. If we're trying to match the entire string and we put a hat at the start and a dollar at the end, then it's only going to match the string hello uh, and nothing else. There are other ways if you're trying to match the word hello in a sentence and it has spaces, for instance, and you can use things like word boundaries or you could put the space as part of your pattern. So there are other ways you can match the word hello if you do need to do um, something slightly different. But these are just saying I want my pattern to start at the start of the input string and go all the way to the end of it. So a character class, you'll see a lot of these uh, and they use square brackets and really you're just saying that you want to match one in a set or one or more in a set of possible characters. So on that second line there, ABC is not matching the string ABC, it's matching one of the letters inside those square brackets. So if you ran that against the string ABC, it would work but it would only match the first A. Uh, it wouldn't match the whole string. And if you added those, um, the anchors that we used on the previous screen, the hat and the dollar, then that would not match the string ABC because our pattern is saying I only want one of the letters A, B or C. Uh, within that you can, uh, within character classes, you can use a range using the dash. So you can use things like zero to nine, A to Z, A to F or, or whatever you like. <clears throat> that does raise the question of what happens if you actually want to match a dash um, and there's a couple of ways to do that the first is really a workaround if you put the dash as the first character in the character class then the engines are usually clever enough to realize that you're not trying to specify a range 
Um, and the other way to use it if it's not at the start of the character class is to use the backslash character to escape that dash and tell the engine that you are talking about the actual dash and not the range um, character. Um, and you'll come across that a fair few times. There are lots of things like square brackets and normal brackets that have special meanings in regular expressions. So if you are trying to match brackets, for instance, you would also use the backslash to tell uh, the regular expression that I'm looking for the actual character and I'm not trying to put in some code. So um, character classes continued. Um, there are some shorthand codes. So rather than writing out zero to nine all the time, you can use backslash D and that's exactly the same as writing square brackets zero to nine. The backslash W character is supposed to be a word character. That's alphanumeric and it also contains underscores. Um, now the thing to note, especially with the, um, with the word character, is it's not always identical on different platforms. So again, you do need to check that. Um, and of course, one of the problems is it might work on most of your examples, but there might be a few cases that fail the pattern. So again, be really careful with your testing and make sure that, um, that it covers all the cases it needs to cover. And then backslash S uh, is white space. So again, notice the backslash S will only match a single white space character. You will have to add a multiplier onto that in order to match more than one. So test, test, test. So the multipliers, um, I think it says multipliers, but it should say multipliers. You've got some, um, I think they're called quantifiers on the regex site, but star means to match the preceding term zero or more times. So you use that quite a lot. And the plus matches it one or more times. And then if you want to be more specific, you can use curly brackets. A single number in curly brackets says match the preceding item exactly that many times. And two numbers in, bracket, in curly brackets separated by a comma means match between the first number and the second number. So on the example at the bottom, um, notice that the two comma four only applies to the zero to nine block. It doesn't apply to the one to nine block at the start. So unless you put brackets around the whole thing, it will only apply to the preceding term. So this will match, the first block will match one to nine, and then the second block will match um, any digits um, from zero, zero up to 9999, which gives the range of 100 to 99,999. So that's a good example of even, a, even in a simple case, it's not necessarily very easy to read um, exactly what's happening there. So you just got to be a bit careful. And then the dot, uh, the dot is kind of very useful, but it's a bit too powerful and sometimes it can trip you up. So it's supposed to match every character except a new line. So that sounds quite a kind of easy, crude way of saying, you know, just find anything and then you know a search term that I'm looking for but the problem is that because it is not precise you can get problems with a greediness with the way that it matches characters so for instance if you're trying to match uh, an HTML tag you might think let's put some triangle brackets and inside the triangle brackets we have dots dot plus and that would say I'm looking for you know any character that is you know one or more copies of it so that will match a b tag or a you know html tag or whatever but then we run it against that test um on the second line there b test end of b and we expect it to find the first tag but it doesn't it actually matches the the whole string and that's because the plus operator is greedy and it's kind of said well okay i found the first bracket but then I found the last bracket right at the very end and everything in between matches dot plus. So it ends up matching the whole string, which again is probably not what you want. Um, and there's kind of a few different ways of getting around that. You can use the question mark after the plus and that question mark says tells the plus operator to be lazy. So it says just find the minimum uh, amount that you can and that will be one way to fix it. Uh, you can use more exact patterns. Um, and that includes saying, for instance, rather than dot plus, I want to match any word character, perhaps, um, and or, or I, I don't want to match the closing triangle within the closing triangle. So there's a couple of different ways around that. But really, the, um, you know, the, the main lesson of reg regular expressions is to try and be as precise as you can. Um, and that usually makes it a bit easier to make your regexes work. 
So the next thing to look at is groupings. So the grouping is really just uh, a whole block of match, uh, of sorry, a whole block of pattern inside some brackets. And what this allows you to do really is two things. It allows you to apply things like multipliers to more than one term at a time. So in that first example, that four a multiplier is only applied to the zero to nine because that's the immediate preceding term. Whereas if I put brackets around the two preceding terms and then put the four, then the four applies to the whole block um, of those two um, character classes. And note that that changes um, quite dramatically um, what happens here. So uh, in the second example, what you're actually matching is four two digit numbers right next to each other with no spaces. So if you like, it will match zero 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 all the way through to nine 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 nine, which is um, maybe is or isn't what you want to do. But that's how you group things together. Um, the question mark uh, here is used as the way of saying that the preceding term is optional. So this is not to be confused with the laziness operator. They use the same character, but they mean different things. In this case, what we're saying is, um, is that the preceding term might or might not appear. So in this case, it's saying, well, at this point in this pattern, there might be an integer number, but there also might not be. Um, so the second use for groupings is that they allow you to pull out individual matches from the pattern. So if you had a message, for instance, that had maybe a source and a destination and an IP address and those kinds of things, if you actually use normal brackets around the individual parts of that pattern, then if your input is a match, you can then pull out those individual parts and then you might want to do something like log the IP address to file um, or, you know, or something like that. So they're used for groupings as well as for um, applying multipliers. So that's it for now. That's our quick guide. Hopefully it's enough to kind of get you started. Uh, most of the information I've taken for this has come from that page there at regularexpressions.info. Um, there's loads and loads of information on that site about just about everything, including uh, things that are different between different platforms. Um, but it's also quite a hard site to navigate. Um, so st stick with it and you, um, you should find out what you're doing. But really, the lessons are, you know, test it, test it, test it and build up your regular expressions from smaller parts. And then that should enable you um, to do exactly what you need to do. Okay, thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed this. Any comments, please leave them below.